You've had quite a bit on your plate this year, earlier this year, well, of course, looking at the aviation sector. Uh, do you still have airlines uh, and airports like Sydney Airport, which is a monopoly? Do you have them in your sights? Are they doing the right thing at the moment or are they on notice? In, we have ongoing inquiries now in relation both to the airline sector and airports in mm. each of the major monopoly airports. We are uh, reviewing, particularly in relation to the airports, uh, the question of their pricing, transparency of their pricing and the capacity for the airlines to properly negotiate to get an appropriate and competitive uh, arrangement uh, with them in terms of access to services. In terms of airlines, we have now uh, got an ongoing inquiry looking at the extent of competition, not solely in relation to price, but in relation to service and quality of service, which uh, the travelling Australian passengers <laughs> continue to have concerns about. Yes, they certainly do. Um... So when you say this is ongoing uh, from your perspective, and I, I do note when you look at the Airbnb um, example, that was years ago that that practice was um, going on, but the ACCC has taken action now. So I, I guess your message would be to some of these monopolies, don't think you can get away with it if you did it years ago and have corrected that practice since. That's absolutely right. So in... We are watching closely. Uh, in addition, uh, we hold digital platforms, airlines, airports accountable to comply with the law. In, it is interesting in the Airbnb example, as an example, Laura J, of what you're saying. So consumers realised they had a concern. Uh, roughly 2,000 complained to Airbnb. When they got no redress from Airbnb, consumers complained to the ACCC. We found that actually approximately 63,000 Australian consumers have been affected. So through our investigation, we uncovered it. And then we commenced proceedings roughly at the beginning of this year. It, this has just taken this period to resolve it. And as you noted, we have a consumer redress program in here as well. So consumers will be paid the amounts that they were charged more than they expected, including the foreign exchange transaction fees. I just do want to warn your viewers not to be prey to scammers. We have found recently that scammers approach people when there is a refund available. It is important to engage through your Airbnb account and the portal that will be there, not to respond to someone who contacts people out of the blue offering to assist with a refund. Uh, yes, uh, it's a very timely warning. Those scammers are getting more and more sophisticated and it's really difficult to tell uh, the, the scammers from some legitimate uh, claims as well. Gina, before I let you go, Merry Christmas to you, by the way. But I do, do note that since you um, took the helm of the ACCC, there's been a, a number of landmark cases. In, in 2024, what do you have your sights on? Do you think, you know, our competition sector, uh, our retail sector, the way consumers, uh, consumers are protected is, is pretty good compared to the rest of the world or can we do better? We can always do better. <laughs> we are very keen on the law reform process being looked at in terms of unfair trading practices, so to capture subscription traps and points that are not in our ter the terms and conditions that we get but are in the process of dealing with us, make it impossible to contact anyone to cancel a subscription, as one example. We are also looking very closely at increasingly manipulative sales practices that happen in this very prevalent online economic, uh, digital economy and uh, digital online environment. We are also participating closely in a process for working to get reforms to have fit for purpose merger review laws. So there, mm. there is much on the go. Uh, we do see this as an important time to 
give the full benefits of the current law to consumers and to competition and small business, but also to reset some of the laws to better protect competition and promote competition and protect consumers. Are you pro-merger or do you sometimes think that these big mergers don't serve the, the consumer um, because they reduce competition? We recognise that the vast majority of mergers result in efficiencies and result in, in uh, a better capacity for goods and services to be provided, but there are a number where we are very concerned because there are higher levels of concentration and where there is less competition, less choice for consumers and less downward pressure on price. And also importantly, from a business perspective, for suppliers who supply in and are reliant upon parties who will purchase from them. If that becomes too concentrated, they don't have enough competition to be able to get a fair price for what they supply. So we are very focused on that smaller set of matters where competition and consumer interest will be better protected if we are sure we see all of the mergers and we don't see all the mergers. Mm -hmm. So its stock example was a great example. There had been multiple acquisitions made over years and we had none had been notified to us um, to create the second largest chain of pet, uh, product supply company uh, stores. So what we really do, we want is to be able to see all and to have the right powers to be able to proceed in relation to the small minority where there is a real risk of detriment to our economy and yeah. to consumers and to small business. Well, Gina, it sounds like we might be talking to you a fair bit in 2024. In the meantime, I hope you get a decent break. Gina, thanks so much for your time.